is the Let's Talk Leadership podcast. My name is Ellie Greeny. And my name's Sandra Patel Stewart. On this podcast, we will be interviewing some of the UK's greatest tech leaders. We'll be discussing war stories, battle scars, and their learnings from their journeys. Hopefully, you will pick up some great tips, learn from others' experiences, and have a good laugh along the way. and welcome to the Let's Talk Leadership podcast. So we have a fantastic guest on the show today. So we've got Liam Cadd. So Liam is the Head of Digital Transformation at Sky, who we have recently engaged with to discuss collaboration opportunities within the Northern tech community. Liam started his career at CPP within the project space and worked his way up to manager level before joining Sky. Liam has a huge passion for all things tech, leadership, and specifically focused, he's got a real interest on women in tech and supporting that as well. So we're really looking forward to hearing his story today and discussing some of those super important topics there. So hi, Liam. Hi, guys. I see you. Hi. So nice to meet you. (laughs) Lovely to have you on the show. How are you today? I'm good. It's Friday. Can only be good, good. on a Friday, right? Yay! I know. I've got the afternoon off as well, so it's just like, nice. a blessing. bit of a blessing. Nice, nice, fantastic, brilliant. Um, so we were just chatting um a little bit about you and and some of the interesting things that you've got um on the radar for this year. So I'm really, really keen to hear more um about that and I'm sure our listeners and, and viewers will be as well and I think we'll get a lot of I know what what's coming up and what we're going to be discussing and I think we're going to get a lot of um traction on this one as well and hopefully really help that help our tech community to learn and develop and, and progress within their careers as you have um so I always like to start these with just finding out setting that scene setting a bit of context find out more about you um so if you could just tell us more about your journey how you got into tech um, and then how you got to where you are today that'd be fantastic yeah absolutely uh, so I, I think quite a few people say this that you kind of falling into tech is kind of a bit of a line that's used um I uh, I didn't go to university so I kind of left from college days um mm-hmm. Bounced around in a few different roles, call center work, kind of went into a bit of marketing, just really kind of putting a bit of feels out there. But if nothing else, it was just kind of cash in the bank just to pay, mm-hmm. get, you to, get you to the next month. Um, and then joined a company called CPP um, and got an opportunity to move into their tech department. Um, went into kind of a, a project management office um, planning role. Um, it was quite it's quite a, a kind of a new function that was being created and it was also a bit of a boom um, around agile ways of working and obviously it was a, it's a financial services company so um, an area where lots of interest but obviously with governing controls that are in place it's quite hard to sometimes break down them barriers um, and if anything I was really just given a bit of freedom to operate I'd say um, I think there was kind of low risk because it was a new function and stuff that we could kind of go and explore mm-hmm. and do new stuff in but um, great people that were around me that had huge amounts of experience in the industry and and in kind of project and program work. Um, a couple of people, Hyde Yotley um, and Mike Howlin, um, kind of my um, heads of and directors. I remember yeah, Mike. Great. I was working for years. Yeah, he's a, he's Heidi's a lovely as well. She's great. Yeah, she's great. But just just both of them, I think, saw saw probably an opportunity in me that I was passionate. Um, yeah. And a bit fresh faced. Didn't really know what I was doing, but was just like a, a kind of sought opportunities to, to solve problems at that stage and um, yeah I think it kind of got the balance right between giving me the freedom to operate and then guiding me as well mm-hmm. um, and then that progressed quite quickly really I uh, um, was there for five six years but kind of worked my way up into uh, the group PMO planning function um, and running, running that across um, across 15 countries uh, so wow. really really broad broad and stretching role um, but also just uh, again, I guess as a company, we were we were navigating big transformational replatforming programs, also under a big um, uh, financial uh, regulation and a, and a um, FCA scheme that was running as well. So it was kind of real big kind of shifting of utilizing agile ways of working, but also the obviously stuff where it's it's governed quite tightly and there needs to be the controls and practices of kind of the Prince two um, methodology that comes into place. So I think I just it was just so uh, far-reaching that it gave me the kind of the breadth of experience. 
Um, and from that, yeah, I've got the opportunity to go and work for work into Sky. Um, I think it was around kind of 60, 70 people when I first joined Sky. Um, was a bit of a. How many did you have when you finished at CPP? In the group PMO function. The group role, yeah. Yeah, so I guess we were the broader function we had was around 30 to 40 people that we had in, okay. in the planning function. Um, we was we were a small team um, that looked after kind of the group PM uh, portfolio yeah. office. Um, so we run kind of the prioritization across across the countries. But the biggest interest I had, which is what we kind of took into Sky, was how you get this balance between centralization and making sure that you've kind of got the your your focusing um, the company on the kind of the big priorities that we need to go at, whilst also giving agility within um, the smaller localized teams. Because actually, what you can find with these bigger functions is that you end up actually slowing down progress. <laughs> you become yeah. a bit of a bottleneck. And, and mm. the idea generation becomes centralized and actually you need to push some of that empowerment back out mm. whilst also making sure that it's kind of ladders up to a, a bigger, more meaningful goal. Um, so I, so I, I think we, we, we cracked it in some areas, but there was a lot still to do in CPP. But I felt that actually for personally, I was ready for a bit of a new challenge and probably e exit the financial services area and try something quite new, uh, where there was Kind of a bit more freedom to operate and sky just seemed like a really great place to join um as it was it was building a, a digital center of excellence um so yeah so when i joined joined sky uh like i said there was 60 70 people based in wellington place um and within 18 months i think we were 600 plus it was just like crazy rapid growth one of them situations where you're the newbie um, on week one, and then by week two, you're like the most experienced person within. The <laughs> um, it was such an exciting time for the whole city, though. I think when that like okay. literally popped up out of nowhere, it was a real buzz. Uh, it was amazing. It absolutely was, and uh, and I think also just because it attracted so much um, uh, expertise that are from different markets that wanted to just kind of tap into yeah. it, both actually to join Sky, but also like you said, just just the buzz that it created um, for communities um, to come together. And were you involved in, like, were you fairly instrumental in helping Sky to grow to those numbers? And yeah, so I got a real, yeah. so I, it wasn't intentional to come in, actually. Um, so I came into kind of a group planning role. Um, yeah. But uh, Angus McKenna and Thea Hines and uh, Matt Grest, who were the kind of the, the core team mm -hmm. that were running it, gave me the opportunity to look at our um, agile ways of working to fit into the wider Sky ecosystem. So I think Sky had kind of made this commitment to look at kind of agile ways of working, but at the same time, we're kind of, we're one arm of a big, big ecosystem that sits across the whole, the whole group. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so I was part of that group um, leading across that it was really, really interesting to try and strike the balance, right? Because mm -hmm. um, I think we've, we had loads of, um, use the language purist, but passionate people about agile that kind of it, it, in your bubble works really well. But actually, when you kind of lift the lid on that and try and work work at, a, at an enterprise level, um, comes with its challenges, and you've got to try and make that work. But um, again, I'd say I'd say those, those guys and Gail Parker is another person who just um, that I worked really closely with, and all just gave me, a, I guess, really good guidance, but gave me some freedom to operate, which I think was just the real key thing in in any of these roles when you're doing transformation. I think the, for, you kind of need to be able to fill and, and, and to learn from that. But I think you need to be able to allow teams to just try new things out um, and see what works, but also make, just make sure you've got a clear objective. And I think that's the biggest learning for me that in my career is that at times I've probably gone off a bit and like gone, there's loads of stuff we can do here and you get a bit lost, you, lost in your ways. And um, I think if, if you can always set a very clear objective or a, kind of a bit of a North Star of what you're trying to get to as a team, and keep mm. checking on yourself to say, am I truly getting there? Is that where I'm still focusing on? Or actually, have I got a bit lost in some exciting thing over here? I think is really, really, really helpful. Um, so, yeah, so I, I, I guess first couple of years in Sky, um, kind of focused around just setting up, setting up Sky lead stuff mm -hmm. um, was the main thing. And then I think we, we, we got a bit of permission to have some freedom to operate um, for a couple of years, rightly so, do you know what I mean, to get the setup right. And then yeah. actually the demand of the business came in quite hard. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, the reality of our commercial numbers that we need to meet um, and demands of the roadmaps across the board. So um, it was quite quick, quickly, we needed to make a bit of a shift in what works and what doesn't and make some quite quick calls. And uh, then got the opportunity to go and work for uh, Matt Zellum um, to mm -hmm. lead 
uh, delivery across the Sky Mobile launch. So first ever kind of big product launch, personally in my career. I've done a lot of around replatforming the program uh, platforms, but not actually a launch of a product. And that was just incredible. Like honestly, the just being being obviously just part of the digital side of things, but seeing the scale of what a launch launch is as of a company um, of Sky um was just was just brilliant um just absolutely loved it lots of late nights getting called out at three o'clock in the morning just I mean, <laughs> trying to work out what's going wrong um bit of a bumpy kind of the uh, what's the um, analogy you use of uh, the swan on the on the top of the water but pedaling like mad underneath felt like that for quite some time after launch um but amazing to see just the growth of that product um, mm-hmm. and that's where I think I've just got the opportunity really from that. I think the, um, probably the backing in the business and got my exposure um, mm-hmm. was, was, was built around that, that product launch. Um, and now working into a consumer group as leading the transformation uh, for digital um, over the next few years. Fantastic, brilliant. So how many, um, how many people are you responsible for now? So, so I've got a team of around 10 to 15 that we, we mm-hmm. sit across, but we, we've got quite a flat structure in, um, we call it digital commerce labs. Um, and there's a lot of matrix management. So the intention, the intention in my role is mm-hmm. um, ultimately to sit across the spectrum of our strategy and uh, across all of the labs ways of working. So, you know, I just talked about kind of centralized functions. Yeah. Um, what we're keen to do is make sure we empower the labs in its entirety and the idea generation comes from there. But ultimately we, we kind of uh, feed big opportunities into the teams where possible. And I think it's a lot of, for me is about opening doors now, um, but rather than me opening the door fully, walking through it and t- dealing with all of the work and not nobody else gets the opportunity to actually see it from the beginning. Um, the, the language I was using this week was, I'm just probably getting the jaws of, doors ajar and then let the teams push them wide up. And that's, yeah, and that's yeah. kind of what, that's where I see my role this year is that we've just got mm-hmm. huge opportunities across the business and externally as well. Stuff like this, just talking mm-hmm. to other, um, other partners that are interested in the field. Um, just to start opening a few more doors, but then let the teams push them wide open and, and run yeah. through. Yeah. And that's so great as well, because you get so much job satisfaction from that, don't you? Like watching other individuals do really cool things. Like I know that's where I'm at now. Like I love, I'm so proud of my team and what they do and what they achieve. And I think just watching others grow and giving them opportunities is just really cool. It's, it it's, is. It's really cool. nice and fulfilling as well, isn't it? It's, um, yeah. It yeah. is. Uh, and I, I, I think I'm, it's maybe not quite fit to the strategist role, which is um, which uh, maybe AI tailor it to my personal um, interests, but I'm really keen to see the end result as well. I'm kind of not one of these people that can just sit and do transformation and, and build reports and say, right, let the teams go off. I'm really keen to actually say, let me let me get involved as well with it. Yeah, I think, yeah. That's, really, I think that's really key for the teams to see that you, just, I think as a leadership team, you don't just sit and wait for things to come back to you. You get into the detail, but you know how to step in and out when. Yeah, you know to step step away from it and then work on that journey with them, which is um, yeah, fantastic, brilliant. So what um, what an impressive um, career like background. Like you've you've obviously gone from strength to strength throughout your career. Um, it was quickly at CPP moved into management and um, responsible for a relatively large team um, and and again moved very very quickly within within Sky into different roles and, and progressing all the way along I think what would be really interesting because a lot of our reviews and listeners um, that are interested in this leadership podcast and um, they um, you know that they generally like a lot of people that are inspirational and looking to um, looking for that next step and looking at like you know to, to learn from others that have progressed and developed within their career and so I think it'd be really interesting to um, share with everyone how you think that you got to where you are today as quickly as you did and is there anything that you did differently what you know what can others do to learn from you yeah no absolutely so I think it's probably it's a mixture of a few things I think there's um it, good leadership around you is key right I, I would not have been able to get to where i am yeah. career with the names i've not mentioned there around um philippa ricard's another person as well that i probably didn't mention but she was some great just, leaders there yeah, yeah just there's people that um that back you if nothing else but they give you the right direction but the freedom to operate i think is really key so um i, I think oh, just making sure you've got that around you and even if you feel like you don't probably be open with people if you don't feel like you've quite got that freedom to operate, be open with the people that manage you and lead you. 
Um, I, I think going and seeking opportunities whilst also getting your work done. And um, <laughs> it's something I've always like balanced in my career is that everybody could go off and go and explore new ideas and be like, I could go and do this and I could go and do that. And then the people that um, we could sometimes call them the, the steady eddies in the team, you know what I mean? That they, they just get the work done every time, miss out on their opportunities. And I Even think the lights on though, aren't they usually? Exactly. And it's, it's like fundamental to the success yeah. of what we do as the company. So how do you, and I think it's always key to people that are there that want to push further. You need to get the job done as well. <laughs> Sometimes mm-hmm. you just need to stop and say, actually, this is the job I'm here to do. Let me do a really good job at this. And that's, and that's as good as me pushing yeah. to the next thing. Yeah. So I think I've always tried to strike the balance of, balance, um, isn't it? yeah, about yeah. going actually, I've got to, in a way, I've been given this opportunity. So let me prove my worth and let me, let me add value to this business and to the team around mm-hmm. me whilst also pushing and going, there's more that we could do as a business and there's more that I want to do uh, personally. So I think that's really key. And then just looking at Sky, especially the last four or five roles I've had haven't actually been roles in Sky. So I think <laughs> it's, it's been about going, if you can see an opportunity, right, that, that there's a need for the business as well as that matches and it marries up nicely to where your aspirations are, go out there and do it and just, and just push on that because Who's, who's going to really turn around to you and say, you've just delivered loads of value to this business and to our customers, and we're really annoyed at that? Like, it just, it just never yeah. happens. And yeah. if it does, you're probably not in the right company. Like, move, you need to move, move away from that. But <laughs> it's very unlikely that's going to ever happen. And, and, and the great thing about Sky is they've recognized that. I mean, they've, they've allowed yeah. me to do it. They've seen the value it's delivered and then gone, do you know what, actually, there's a valuable role there for you. Mm-hmm. And we're going to move into it. I think Sky does do that very, very well. Um, yeah. And... Um, you know, and I think that's what's, a, um, you know, part of what's allowed you guys to grow um, as quickly as you have um, as well, which is fantastic. Sounds like you're in the right, great place, lots of opportunity. Um, yeah. But you've also, like you say, you've grasped those opportunities. And Absolutely. I think the only thing I'd build on it is that you also just be not afraid to just pause in your role as well. And I know my career has moved up very quickly, but actually I'm really comfortable where I am right now. And I've kind of made, a bit of a, I've made a bit of a commitment to myself that I'm, I'm not looking to go to the next level or direct a role. It's like actually the stretch that I get in my personal objectives, as well as yeah. the stretch that Sky gets as well out of me is yeah. feels right for another year or two right now. And, and I think it's, don't feel like you're constantly going, my title hasn't changed. I need to, you know what I mean? I feel like I must yeah. be, I must be showing some level of progression. Mm-hmm. It's about the breadth of the work that you get to do. And if, if it feels stretching, then that's more important. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, so I think it's, you've got to be comfortable with your own career. As long as you're so. still learning and developing. Exactly. exactly. That's Great. It. So I'd love to um, delve then a little bit more into like your leadership style, because that's obviously over the years developed, you've, you've learned from some really inspiring leaders, like we said, some really great names there that you've mentioned. Um, what sort of tips have you got from them and what's your, how's your leadership style evolved over the years? Yeah, no, that's a really good question because it's evolved, it's evolved massively. Um, and I think I've, my personality is very much a bit of a go-getter, just like we've got to get the job done. Comes with a bit of delivery background as well, which is where, I mean, you've just a bit of hard hitting. If there's issues to be resolved, you need to do that. Um, I, I think on reflection, that has meant that I could, in the past, come across a bit micromanage and I can... And, I mean, a bit direct, maybe. Yeah, there's, mm-hmm. not, there's no real freedom for them to operate. So, so actually, I didn't, I didn't distill the freedom that I was given in, in my leaders because I was probably focused on, right, well, I can do all of these things. And, and they were just passing them to the teams rather than giving them opportunities to grow. And that comes with time, right? You, you learn yeah. your own experience. And Does that chat. also think come with like confidence though? Because when you put given an opportunity, you do feel like you've got to prove yourself, don't you, a little bit? So sometimes like it can be that, can't you? Like you can't let go of things and you're on top of everything because you feel like you really got to do, you were given them opportunities and those responsibilities. So now you really want to showcase that you're able to do it. I think that's right. I think it's a bit of an imposter syndrome of that. I think it's also that um, when you progress quickly in your career, career and naturally this is going to happen that there's, you're going to be managing people that are older than you that, mm. that is going to come in your career yeah. that you sometimes feel a bit like well I'm I've stretched myself quite big right and I'm, I'm probably doing a bit of a fake it till you make it type attitude but to, to I'm trying to prove myself to my team <laughs> as well as prove myself to people above so maybe if I just be really directional they're not going to think that I'm just doing a bit of a cop-out giving them freedom because I'm just trying to make them answer the questions and uh, yeah and I think that it, 
that is like you said, it's confidence building, right? Once you get into a, a, a comfortable place around um, that actually you are really good at this job yeah, <laughs> and, and you are good at leading people and you don't need to know everything. I think that's the bit that I, I got comfortable with as I started to step up in my career that you, the best leaders are the people that lead people, not that know and not an expert in every single area. Um, so I think, I think uh, I've still got a long way to go on that. Like I hold my hands mm-hmm. up. I'm sure my team will probably listen to this. Uh, when it, when it comes <laughs> and and um, I, I am trying to still strike the balance between uh, when we've got demands from the business and lots to go at that, not just short circuits, short circuit in the, the solution conversation and just going, mm-hmm. this is what we're going to do. Yeah. Um, but being open about that so I think that's the biggest thing that I see in my leadership style is that I try and be as open as possible and I think context is king I think yeah. a lot of the time we uh, just because of sensitivities of things you know I mean especially in the climate that we're in right now there's lots changing um, as the kind of business operating model in the landscape mm-hmm. and it's hard to share some of that because it is confidential but I think the more you can try and release some of them bits of information so yeah. your teams have got context of why you're doing these things, I think is really key. I think being um, open and honest is, is definitely like such a, a key one and it, and, it, and, and it is something that evolves over time. It's quite difficult, um, but also vulnerability and showing that, you know, having a vulnerable side and being able to share open and share that um, with the people. Um but um, who would you say? Who would you say is your um, who, in terms of leaders that you've had over the years? Obviously, you've mentioned some great names, um, and um, you know a number of people that that we've worked with in the past that are in our network. Some fantastic names. Who would you say has been the most influential leader, like that you've really learned from? Oh, that's a tough question. You're putting him under pressure. Um, it's a really tough question. Um, I, I'm not not trying to be slow shouldered, but I think there's there's probably three that have uh, over the point like certain points in my Different career. Points. Yeah. Um, and I think Mike Allen at the beginning of my career was just like he he just gave me, he, he he pushed me so far that I was in world I was in like realms of like Jesus Christ and I brought myself back down. <laughs> like it was like it, like it, it kind of his commitment for me was like you can achieve anything tomorrow, and um, and I think it, him doing that just just pushed me to that that kind of that that attitude throughout my career is that yeah. actually I can do this um even if even if I know I can't I will be able to at some point so I'm just going to say I can uh, <laughs> so I think he's he's been great in that um I think Philippa was someone who just she steadied me um like I think I, I came into Sky with all of these great big ideas and wanted to do everything possible and she just taught me that actually just just pace yourself <laughs> yeah just slow down just think about these things in a logical way um still let's push on the big ideas but let's make sure that we've got the operation running right i mean this is yeah. as key as anything and then interestingly who i work for now um jennifer day she's kind of a bit she's very transformational um less of kind of the the operational running she wants to push i mean we, we can go faster than our North Star, I mean, there's a North Star plan for the next four years. We'll do it, we'll do it in six months. And um, uh, we talk a lot about swinging the pendulum back and forth on this to, to try and get the balance right. But I think mm-hmm. between them three, I've kind of got the personal go getting I can from Mike. Philippa with the mindset of, I mean, we've got to make this work, right? We can't, we're a, you know I mean, we're a big organization. We're not a startup that can just fall over. We've got to, we've got to keep the ship running. And then Jen being like, actually, let's go hard. You can just, you bring all of them together that actually it's yeah. kind of formulated something like that. So now Sam just digged for a bit of dirt. I'm going <laughs> to dig further for a bit. <laughs> and I want to find out like one of your, well, the biggest like project failure that you've encountered along your career and the impact that it's had to shape you into the leader you are today. Ooh. Okay. Um we want but the dirt, that, Liam. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So I think, I'll, I mean, there's been lots of stuff we've failed on, right? We, we, mm. we still do it all the time. It's a, and it's a culture that we, we in, encourage, if nothing else, to, for us to fail fast within Sky. But I think the biggest thing is when I came into Sky and we were, we were setting up the ways of working um, across the kind of uh, projects, program planning functions, and then trying to marry this up with, agile ways of working and kind of empowered squads. And uh, we started to put a lot of tooling in place around how we manage our resource management, uh, program management and plans, 
um, laddered up to uh, squad sprint plans. And it, it, I mean, it's part of it's still in place right now, so I've probably been quite open here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, the other team will say, like I, oh, so it might not be released for a couple of months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the uh, we, we ran into that at such a pace because we were growing so quickly. We didn't actually really define what it is that we were trying to solve. And I think that that it, it resulted in ultimately us building tooling that just isn't fit for purpose. It was it didn't really know what it was answering, to be honest with you. It ended up in inefficiencies within our ways of working, um, less agility. <laughs> so actually, <laughs> I was probably counteractive to completely everything I was trying to achieve. <laughs> and, and, uh, and it was and it was because of the pace of what I wanted to go at. Mm-hmm. Um, that I drove that into the teams without just stopping and thinking and just going, what is the problem we're trying to solve here? And I think that's always been key in my career of getting this balance between my personal appetite to go fast and want to do more, just bet- but just pausing and, and just, just taking the time to think and reflect and go, right, let's go again. But have we got this right? But the key thing of that is what are you actually trying to achieve at the end of this and mm-hmm. get some real clear problem, problem statements you're trying to solve and objectives you're trying to land and um, and outcomes then the solution will come through it right it's just yeah. like jumping straight to the solution and that, yeah. that's probably my biggest failure. but uh, but that solution is still in place in part so um, like you said if there's a couple of months lag i'll go and manage the conversation internally before <laughs> <laughs> so what were you gonna say then sandra you were gonna i was just gonna say it is so like we were talking about it uh, um yesterday as well weren't we ellie about like discipline and focus and and that's a lot of what it is, isn't it? It's so difficult because like Ellie and I are exactly the same. We run at 100 miles an hour, get an idea. On Passionate like, people, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> like, we just get, we um, love what we do, so we get so excited really quickly. And that's that's part of the problem. Really. And then we get to a problem and we're like, oh, shit, didn't think about that. <laughs> yeah. um, the biggest thing we've got a challenge in Sky. Learn, don't you? Yeah, I was going to say, the biggest challenge we've got in Sky, actually, that not men, not every company will have but we're actually, we've got too many opportunities. And I think that's the thing that we, I mean, some people kind of go, I mean, they're struggling as a business, especially with the economic climate right now, and they have to try and find ways to navigate themselves out of it. We're kind of sat here going, there's so much we could go at this year and over the next three years, and we've just got to be really choiceful. Um, and that's and that's really hard, to kind of, especially with when you empower your teams to think bigger and you know I mean? you kind of want to keep that, um, entrepreneurial spirit of like let's let's go out all of this stuff but saying no to the team is, mm-hmm. is something I really struggle with because I can see the value in what they're trying to do but actually there's just there's just bigger things that we could go out that will get more value for our customers more value for business and actually hopefully in time will be more exciting for them to be working on uh, yeah. but yeah it's, it's it's this balance isn't it of getting keeping the ideas and keeping the the morale of the team going you, you don't want to kind of tamper it down and put yeah you know I mean put blockers on it but you you've got to say no at times yeah yeah you do. definitely um so it's been so quite nice actually so we've just been talking about obviously you know the passion and, and energy and drive and opportunities um you, you are clearly a very passionate um person it would be great to um get some more kind of um I guess more context around what other areas you're passionate about is there anything that's like kind of I guess high on your agenda at the moment that um that you're passionate about that the listeners and viewers would would like to hear do you think yeah definitely I think there's two there's two areas um that I've got a real interest in um some things around most technology which I'll talk to in a second but Mm -hmm. um we, we, we've been I've done a bit of work um, over the past couple of years with uh, Nat Zellum which I'm sure you, you're aware of and yeah uh, we love Nat she's uh, great empowering with tech and, did, and, and supported her conferences mm-hmm. and just seeing that go from strength to strength the work that she's done across that mm-hmm. uh, that, that yeah you uh, supported her a lot with the wit stuff didn't you yeah and I just I mean yeah. it's been running what for four years now and it's, they've got like three conferences a year I think they've got 170 yeah. odd uh, mentors and mentor uh, mentees in the in their scheme so it's kind of it's quite although it's although it's Nat's baby you know I mean she's run it it feels quite passionate for me because I was there from the from the outset of yeah. um, her thinking it up so um and, she even like she came on my women in tech podcast and she was i'm sure she was talking about one of the empowering women with tech com- um conferences one of the first ones that she had and she was like going into labor the night so she, so she this is what i feel really bad about so we were um she gave, she gave birth in the morning yeah she, that's she didn't it tell me she'd given birth 
<laughs> and then and then messaged me and said, Liam, why are you not here? I think we're at the City Town Hall and um, and said, why are you not here? Um, nothing's been set up. And I said, I'm trying to finish my meetings. Can you just get on with it? Because she was obviously on the <laughs> I said, can you get on with it? I was like, I'll be there soon. And I and then obviously when I rocked up, <laughs> she's there. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> What the <laughs> hell? Like that. And I was like, also, what are you baby? <laughs> yeah, I think she was like, so like six hours of like giving birth, getting out of the hospital. <laughs> and then and then she was there giving a speech to open up the whole event. Like, I bet you felt awful. Honestly, I kind of rushed it. It was about like how bad my day had been and how like, <laughs> this is a fair bet to support you and all of this. But yeah, she's a bit of, bit of a wonder woman in that sense. But so yeah, yeah. We, we spoke a lot on on um, over the past two or three years, and I know she's kind of thinking about how we move from empowering women with tech to empowering with tech. And mm. so I think the biggest thing that I'm really passionate about is uh, absolutely bringing more women into the industry. But the thing to do that, you kind of need to stop this focus of just talking about women to women. And yeah. uh, the the best the best way to do that is that you you start to see these conferences are filled 50-50, right? It's and they are open to everyone. That is the case. But I think the more you use gender in your language, it then it starts to feel like, oh, is that just something for women? Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I think... December didn't we? Because I was like saying that weeks we've done loads around um, wit over the years, and and Ellie runs our wit podcast, which I think has been running for what two two and a half years or something. Um, and and um, I think when we we spoke in December, didn't we? we were talking about what I would uh, for a, a year or two now. I've been like, let's get some men involved in the panel because we mm. just always get. I think we've had one event have a wheelie where we had maybe one man. Yeah, Ian Holloway came on, didn't he? Um, he was fantastic, and he's yeah. really. Passionate. And there are like, do you know what I mean? There's there are a lot a lot of um, a lot of guys getting involved and in supporting that. But I think yeah, getting it right is tough, isn't it? And it's 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 super important to be able to be able to get it from both sides. So I've definitely noticed an increase in the gender divide at, at conferences. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, obviously last year we didn't see anyone, did we? Really, but um, the year before it was it was definitely getting there. I remember one of the, the empowering women in tech one of the conferences I went. That must have been that year, and there was there was a really good show of a gender split across the audience, which was yeah, it's it's definitely improving, right? It definitely. Uh, is. I just think we can. I think, Everyone's got to put it on their agenda to be able yeah, to. Yeah, and I think it's, it's just language is really key with some of these things. I think we've yeah. got, we've got the exposure there. We've like lifted we've lifted the, the lid on it, so everyone's yeah. hearing it now. It's like how do you start to treat these things so it's kind of embeds into your culture and it becomes less of a an initiative that you're running. And I think that's yeah. one yeah. one thing we've been doing in Sky, saying we've we've run all of these initiatives and we will still do support. I mean, get into tech programs. That's the right thing to do, just as an ongoing. Um, stream but you shouldn't need a working group to talk about empowering women in tech you need to start thinking about it. it's just bread and butter to us yeah. um, and I think there's tons of males out there that would, would love to would love to be involved in more of this it's probably coincidentally a bit of an imposter syndrome going how do I do it and they feel a bit nervous which yeah. is the thing that we're trying to resolve for women so it's how you just break down the barriers um, I think and I think it's just language is a lot of the time is you just take away um, but I also, but I also think we we talk a lot, um, obviously, with the uh, Black Lives Matter campaign um, and and how how we supported that um, from Sky is that you do have to focus. Do you know what I mean, there's there's lots of stuff that you could go at uh, mm-hmm. across the world, right, and support. Of. Yeah. But sometimes you do need to focus on a specific objective to get the the limelight and focus on actually yeah. the true issue that's there, and then you can start to then uh, kind of widen that you know what I mean and you can then start to build it into your culture how you change your operation mm. that's fantastic so the I think you're rather passionate you were really passionate about immersive tech and you were going to go and tell us a little bit more about what you're up to at Sky with that right? yes yeah absolutely so it's not um so I think we've we've had so much work to do in Sky right we're we've been a telephony based organization with with um, a big digital presence like huge digital presence but we're still a big telephony based organization uh, and we we want to go harder on that, right? We want to make sure that we're we're meeting our customers' needs. And they can, they can get more of what they love every day, right? And they can do that through our digital uh, digital channels. Um, so we've probably spent two or three years just getting some of the basics sorted and, and building some of our foundational capability ready for our customers. And we're and we're there now. I mean, we've got a lot of that there, which is great. So I think the next thing is about going. How do we go that one step further? How do we start to actually surpass the kind of uh, innovation cycle and just go, we'll, we'll do something that's making making the market that no one's ever done before. Do you know what I mean? And they're, they're not seeing these technologies in place. 
And, um, and immersive technology is something that I'm just really interested to tap into. Open and honest, it's not something I've got expertise in, loads of experience, but as you've said in my career, it's kind of the thing that you go, there's an opportunity there and let's, let's go and see what we can do in it. And Sky's kind of backing me to be able to work in that in that sector. Um, so yeah, so, we, so we're just on the really early days really of looking at that. So I think uh, when you talk about augmented reality and things, it's, it's often quite gimmicky um, that, I mean, you, you have a try of it on um, different websites and it doesn't really, it's not really actually answering a customer problem or adding any value, yeah. it's a bit of fun to have in the living room. And some companies have started to get it right. Um, I think it's EasyJet does the uh, fit in the, your suitcase and see if it fits into the holes and you can do like a bit of a scan of it. But the technology is sometimes a bit clunky and it doesn't quite work. So we're, um, we're working quite hard with different third parties now to see how we can, how we can start to, I guess, as the, as the capability and technology is evolving so rapidly, how we can start tapping that and tapping into that and uh, answering some actual customer problems that we've got. Um, but the biggest linkage we've got is around, I guess, digital and retail. And I think with the current climate of what's happening, right, there's going to be uh, people with a lot more expertise than me thinking about the retail strategy um, going forward uh, uh, worldwide, really. Um, and, and our belief in Sky, we've, we're, we're still very much invested in the retail sector. And we're, I mean, there's a big, big plan for rollout stores. Um, but we, but how we can bridge kind of digital technology and the kind of that immersive technology experience with the retail sector, I think is really, really key. Uh, and that's what, that's what we're looking at um, this year. So yeah, su super excited. And it's completely like something fresh for me. Like it's, um, uh, Jen, Jen, my manager, she said to me, it's kind of one of them things where we've got so much going on and there's, I mean, there's, there's, um, lots of kind of stress and challenge as well as opportunities mm -hmm. but this is one of them kind of like fresh fruit uh, kind of uh, blue sky I mean we've it's got no kind of real risk to it because we've never done it before so we can just really have a bit of a play with it and see what we can do um which is just super exciting yeah what a fun project to be a part of yeah, that's really absolutely. fantastic brilliant um what so you've um Obviously, you've progressed very quickly. You're passionate. You're a go-getting, um, you know, person. You're you've got these big new, um, exciting project to get your teeth stuck into. Um, sounds like over the years and 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 probably still now, you you've put you know you've gone above and beyond. You've put lots of hours into um what you do, lots of energy, effort, etc. How um, and this is a big topic as well at the moment is you know kind of looking after you your people as well like the whole kind of well-being wellness um stress managing stress anxiety etc how um you know have you got any tips around that like what's worked well for you and your people um anything that you can share from from that point of view because like I said it is a big topic and um yeah you seem so chilled and calm as well and <laughs> No, so like I mean, a swan though, like a swan, he's yeah. still kicking underneath. <laughs> so I, I mean, uh, I can share some of the things that I've been doing, but uh, certainly maybe maybe it's a bit of perception you give off on over these type of chats. But the, the, on, the honest reality is that I have huge struggles, right? We're in the middle of a lockdown. I live alone. Mm. Um, my, my kind of downtime is going to uh, gigs, going to festivals, going on holiday, relaxing, can't do any of these things. I haven't been able to do any of these things for over a year now. So it's like, you, it, it is a struggle. And there's, I think the biggest thing that I've had as a leader, and I, I hit a bit of a low point last week, actually, which I'm probably open to share about that. Um, just just thought I'm, I'm struggling to go to the next call and put on the face of going, right guys, we can go again, because oh, you can, the team the team are feeling it, right? And, and you've got to get this balance between um, being authentic, right? You don't want to just, constantly with a smile on your face and saying everything's fine because pe because people aren't <laughs> but also we can push through it right and I think we talk about kind of lockdown fatigue and stuff like this but there is still a huge amount of passion and there's ways to navigate it I don't think we need to go into like a a lull of months of doing kind of no no energy around our work sure. um so I personally you just talked about putting loads of hours in um, and that and I think that's one thing I'm trying to find a way of edging away from and, and think behavior breeds behavior sometimes when you're leading teams and you if you you're seen sending emails at 11 o'clock at night mm -hmm. the team suddenly expect that they have to be doing that and do they think that they have to do that to progress in their career and it shouldn't be the case 
Um, naturally, sometimes you need to do that, but it's it just because there's lots on. But I think I'm I'm trying to make sure that I, I split my day up a bit more um, and, and clearly cut off. This is the end of my day now. I'm going to shut my laptop down, close the door. I'm lucky enough sat in my living room today, but I have an office so I can actually do that, which not everyone does, right? Um, some, some people obviously are, uh, are working in shared accommodation. They're all in the same space. So it's, it's quite hard for them. So I think the more you can find a way of finding, physically saying that's an area where I work and I can then shut that away is, is really key. Um, I'm exercising a lot, something I never used to do. Um, <laughs> uh, probably just used to use the excuse of I travel loads and I just don't have the time and all of this going on. And um, But just uh, exercising four or five times a week. Um, and actually it works really well for me working from home. It's been a real positive thing because I literally just go down two flights of stairs to the basement and convert it into like a bit of a home gym and I can oh, do a yeah. workout. So it's, so it's actually, and it takes me 30 seconds. So I think... Yeah. That's been really, really, really key, um, and I think just being a bit open with it. Like, I think you've got to you've you've got to allow yourself in work as well. So you, we'll all have chats outside of work, right? And say feeling a bit rubbish, a bit shit today, um, or actually your boss, your, your friends and family when they're feeling the same. But just finding that person that you can have that open chat with in in the office because it can be quite lonely as a leader. I think that you, there's an expectation you always need to keep this energy levels and you always need to keep your team going. And I think the more you can find somebody to just have that open chat with, to say, you know what, I'm just not, I'm just not there today. Yeah. I'm just not, I'm struggling with it. Um, is that what you did yeah. last week? God, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> so is that what you did last week then? Because I'd be interested yeah, in so saying I, last I, week was a struggle. What, what was the, what happened? What was the result of it? You were uh, so I took the day off the next day. Um, right. I got my peers to cover me in the meetings, was open with them and said, you know, I'm just not, I'm just not going to show up. Or I, I, I can show up in the way, but it's going to be. But I'm not, not gonna, show up. Show I'm not, up. Yeah, I'm not going to be authentic yeah. with it. And also yeah. I'm going to continue to deteriorate. And I think that's the thing. If you know yourself, I'm not there. Yeah, just accept it. And Jen made a really good point. She, she uh, my boss, she said to me, uh, I talk a lot about. I don't want to let the team down. You know what I mean? I feel like, and they're going through this as well. So why should I? Why should I get the permission to just go off and yeah. meet time? But quite frankly, as, as she said, was it's better you do that now, and it's only a day, and then you're ready to go again next week. If you, if you are ready, um, then pushing yourself to the point you're at the limit that you're off for a few weeks because you know I mean yeah. you're literally like I've, I've hit rock bottom now. And it has massively helped, right? I just needed to just take myself out of it, um, a bit of a fresher. Um, I've actually just bought one of these Lumi lights as well. Um, it's I've got it on here, which is like supposed to simulate some kind of sunlight. I think it's the, the white cells in it, which uh, yeah, I've seen quite a few people are getting those. Yeah, and it's I, I, look, whether whether this is going to work all the time, whether this actually only works for the next couple of weeks, and then you need to go again. I've got a habit of suddenly I feel because I used to travel, used to be in different sites and in different meeting rooms. I struggle with just being in the same position in the same location. So I'm constantly You've been on the go all the time, haven't you? And exactly. um, yeah, yeah I'm a bit like that. It's hard when you yeah, you just can't go anywhere, can't do anything, and you you you're forced to slow down, but it's just it's weird, isn't it? It's like it's hard to adapt to to yeah. it. Absolutely. So the biggest thing I've done, which I think does really help, and it's actually a tangible thing that you can do, is either move your position that you're working in through the day. So not just like week in, week out, just try, just take yourself like in the morning. If I, my meetings start normally kind of past seven, eight, I'll have that in the in the kitchen with a coffee and I just sit in there because I'm talking. Then I'll go into the office. Then like in here, I'm in the living room. If you can't do that, not everyone's got the flexibility, don't mean if you're in shared accommodation, move things on your desk. So have your monitor in one place and your plan and then move it around up for the afternoon. And I know it sounds like really simple stuff, but it's just, yeah. you're looking at a slightly different angle. Um, mm. And it just, it just these little things, I think, really help just changing things up. Um, but yeah, oh, I mean, I don't know what you guys have been doing, but just uh, I'm, I'm open to ideas all the time. So I'm kind of like, like I said, living alone. And, and everyone keeps saying, do you, do, do you want to go for walks? I'm like, no, I don't. Do you want to do a Zoom call? No, I don't. I want to go on holiday. <laughs> that's what, that's what <laughs> yeah. I want to do. That's my, that's my downtime. I want to be on a sunbed in a nice five-star hotel. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> <laughs> how can you do that for me? But yeah, have you guys been doing much? Have you? Well, Sandra, I mean, I, 
I, I was before, I actually took a bit of time off in December. Sandra uh, kindly gave me the whole of December off work because I had a pretty tough year last year and my tank was like empty. Like I was like what you were saying before and I was completely drained. And I'm always like the most positive person. Like yeah. most calls I do, people always go like, how many coffees have you had today? Like, <laughs> where the hell do you get all this energy from? Like, I get it all the time. And uh, I just kind of felt like I was being like insincere with it because I was so drained and tired. So I took a bit of time off and couldn't really do a huge amount because of COVID anyway, but just felt like just stepping away from it for a little bit made me feel when I came back in January, I felt so much better about coming back to work and, and cracking on, being able to take it, like taking a little bit of break and a time for myself. I mean, not everyone can have an opportunity like that. So forever thankful for getting the opportunity, but <laughs> taking a little bit of time, but it is tough at the moment, isn't it? Cause I, like, I'm very much, I always plan so much every weekend. I'm not from the North all my family and friends are all over the UK. So I spend a lot of time usually traveling to see them. And I yeah. feel like your weekend is so much shorter when you just stay at home, isn't it? Funny so. how quicker time goes when you're not doing a lot as well, doesn't it? It's, um, yeah, yeah exactly. weekends just go so quickly. Um, I'm trying to think what else we've done that might, um, one thing that I picked up on the other day um, that I thought was a really good idea is um, this was um, we had somebody else on our podcast um, this week, actually. And he said he has like um, an open Zoom channel. So like he'll just and it's in everyone's diary. So it's like I think it's like two or three hours on a set day every week. And he'll be he'll still be working. But it, and he keeps Zoom open so people can just pop in and out if they fancy it which I thought was quite a good idea you know just for a chat it's just tough though isn't it because like usually you get your energy off other people and if you feel a little bit low but as soon as you walk into the office and someone's in a good mood you completely switch from that so it is tough doing it yourself and you can't feed off that the same way over zoom so all we've got to do is just keep doing our best isn't it and it sounds like you've done a really good job of that with your team yeah I think the biggest the biggest thing that I am like people who are listening to this love to get ideas around it because we're because we're also looking at going there's loads of value of us going to this model right and of us working from mm-hmm. home there's been some real benefits of us and our ways of working and, and adapting them especially in the technology environment where um as a developer you just need to be able to get your head down and no distractions um but also the kind of collaboration and i think it's that bit i really really struggled with is that um just how you run kind of the typical workshops and the interactive nature that that comes with it through through a zoom call and you keep the energy levels um we kind of put a bit of a mantra at the start of the first lockdown saying that we weren't going to mandate people need to come on camera don't it's up to them we didn't want to force it but as a leader it's we like i've been open with my team i said it's really hard to just know if anyone like is anyone actually there they've not got the cameras on like yeah. on. <laughs> just, just, the, just the body language of just the nods of the heads and the i mean people yeah. you, you get you, you don't and want I, people rolling their eyes when the cameras yeah, are on. And, I, and I'm like, I'd, ra- I'd rather it, right? I'd rather you like roll your eyes to me because I'd be like, I'd, I'd welcome that now than just sitting. <laughs> with, you know, I just think, I just think in this day and age, there must be so much more like um, tooling and collaboration tools that we could utilize. And I don't think we've gone as far in that realm yet within Sky. I think we've got more to do. Like it's obviously we use all kind of Teams, Zoom, all of this good stuff, and we're trying to the interactive whiteboards but they just they just don't feel like it's quite clicking yet and it's not it doesn't it doesn't feel like it's matching the physical post-its on a whiteboard. It never will though will it? it I don't know right I don't know will it like I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm the optimist of thinking that we we would have said no we would never have been able to get this far that we can all sit on um, and stuff like this so I think I think there is ways and means that we can get we can cross that boundary of interactive natures and whether that's dual screens and you have to have different ways you have to have actually physical tooling in your house as well to do some of this stuff but yeah i'm sure there's much more smarter people in the in the world than me that's thinking about some of this thing kind of think about this yeah i'd watch this space i think there's going to be a lot more coming out this year yeah there's that's certainly it. a lot well, of lord knows out. we need it we <laughs> well, yeah. can get away. particularly if this keeps rolling on so we um i'd love to finish the podcast then by finding out what you've got on the agenda for 2021 i know we can't probably not a huge amount from what we've just said then but like what are you what, what's getting you up in the mornings and keeping you excited about things at sky obviously the immersive tech piece is a huge part of that but what else have you got going on yeah so i think the main thing is doing things like this so i've, I've this is the first one i've ever done first podcast i've ever done i 
I've always shied away from doing like um, kind of external talks. Um, oh, yeah. Probably a bit. They of, do a lot of Sky anyway, don't they? Like, yeah, they do. And I've, yeah. I've always been the. Uh, don't worry, I'll I'll sort the things back at the back at the ranch, and you guys go and do all of that. And yeah. and that's Ellen, who I work. As I said, I work for. She's obviously just complete other end of the spectrum, and she's yeah. been like dragging me along, saying, "You've got to do yeah. some of this." I've got a long list of things that I want to get you involved with, so I'll have to check out that soon. <laughs> but yeah, that, I think that's the main thing, Ellie, is just I'm, I'm just really excited to, I guess I feel like I'm at a point where I'm going, uh, I've got loads of experience that I can share, but also just spending time just to hearing other people's thoughts around stuff as well. Um, and then how we can start to really just push the boundaries in, in, in the sector, like I said, around empowering women with tech and going going slightly different with that and how you start to you how you start to bridge the gap a bit more it's just it just really excites me um and i think that i'm probably at the point in my career where i'm not needing to push constantly to the next thing i'm like actually i'm yeah. really excited about doing something at this level and working with yeah. different people so yeah i think that, that's the main thing um and then there's huge amounts to go out at sky we've got we've got loads of opportunities um, and leading teams across that cool sounds like some more lovely stuff that's going to help create a positive impact uh, on the community which is fantastic here so it's been fab having you on the show if anyone wants to get in touch liam what's the best form of contact linkedin twitter yeah linkedin linkedin's the best one yeah just drops me a drop me a dm i won't make the mistake of um advertising roles without my recruitment team in sky I've, uh, which i did in the lockdown and i've got about a thousand and odd DMs at the minute. In the <laughs> and, and, and recruitment said, we do tell you the reason why you're supposed to use us and manage it in the proper way rather than just going off rogue. <laughs> yeah, DM yeah, 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 yeah. me on uh, LinkedIn. Perfect. I'm sure fantastic. people want to reach out and chat about all the great initiatives you've got in place. So yeah, it's been fantastic having your show. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank Thanks you for having me. All right. Take cheers. Care. Cheers. cheers. Transition partners take mental health very seriously. We are now supporting Claro Mental Health Charity, who are local and based in Harrogate. We are working closely with Richard Kenny, who is the IT director at Tech Buyer. Claro operates as a commercial workshop making goods for businesses, which enable those with long-term mental health conditions to function in a vol voluntary real work environment. We would love it if you can join us in supporting this amazing Amazing cause and charity and donate what you can any any amount will be greatly appreciated thank you very much and thanks to all our listeners